are watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Celestial greetings. I'm Janet Booth, a professional astrologer from West Hartford, Connecticut, and welcome to my program on astrology called Looking Up. This marks the 16th anniversary of Looking Up. It was December of 2000 when I taped my first show. That was also the time when I first came out with my original Janet's Planets calendar. And actually the staff here at WHC-TV asked me today, well, why didn't you call your show Janet's Planets? And I suppose I could have, but I really like the idea of the uplifting and positive message that comes with a name like looking up and also I want to encourage everybody to keep your eye on the sky whether that's day or night sometimes you see the moon during the day so that's fun and at night there's always something to see unless it's cloudy and just recently we had the moon as close to the earth as it will be in our lifetimes well maybe some of you young kids will live to see it again like that but not me anyway that was exciting and it occurs to me that as we go into 2017, which is the topic of today's show, surfing the wild waves of 2017, that that's my 17th year of this TV show. And numerologically, 2 plus 0 plus 1 plus 7 equals 10, and 10 reduces 1 plus 0 to a 1. So it's a universal one year, and universal means that's what we're all experiencing. Now, if you know your own birthday and month, you can add those together, and you add the one to that, and that's what year it is for you. But all of us are experiencing one, and one means new, and it means starting a cycle that goes for nine years, and we don't always have a one year at the beginning of a new presidential term. So this will be something to experience. And it is gonna be kind of a crazy year. I will say that. Now, where to begin? Begin at the beginning. As the calendar turns to 1-1 one, one, on our one year, we have three things going on that are a little bit topsy-turvy and mixy-uppy. Now you're probably familiar with what I've spoken to you before about called Mercury retrograde. But if this is your first time, I'll just mention, Mercury is the planet of the mind and the mouth and even motoring around or being a pedestrian. It's our local transportation and our communication. And by optical illusion, when it passes between the Earth and the Sun, it appears to go backwards in the zodiac for about three weeks, and this happens about three times a year. And we're right in the middle of that at New Year's. So that kind of means maybe when you go to look at your list of New Year's resolutions, you'll be resolving to do the same thing you've done before, and well, you've resolved to do before again and again. So it is kind of a good time to resurrect those old resolutions and see how you can do on them this year. Or Mercury retrograde is a time to reflect, review, revise. So there, maybe you want to revise those old resolutions. Another thing that's going on at the new year, actually technically, precisely 1229, 2016. The planet Uranus, which is the one that's most associated with everything kind of unpredictable and crazy. It's at what appears to be a standstill. Now when I mention Mercury retrograde, and all of these retrogrades are optical illusions due to the fact that Earth is moving and so are the planets. 
So even if you think about, have you ever been on a train track next to another train and you're both going forward, but because one's faster than the other, it feels like one's going backwards. So that's what retrograde is. And when a planet starts or finishes its retrograde, it's like it is at the terminal station to change direction, for instance, the end of the line uh, at a train station. And it's called being on station. And it means that that planet parks at that degree and hangs out there an extra long time. So that degree is sort of like sensitized. And um, the planet that's doing this stopping, apparent stopping, because it never really is changing its forward motion through space, but it has extra power at that time. So that means extra crazy because Uranus basically isn't moving. And the other thing that's going on as the new year kicks off is Mars together called conjunct with Neptune. Mars is our action and energy planet. It's our get up and go, rev rev. And usually, or let's say in many signs, Mars is very determined, decisive, go forward, I know what I want, and I'm going after what I want. Neptune, on the other hand, think fog, think dissolving, it like rules paint thinner, for instance. And so it fogs this get up and go. And instead of having this clear idea of what we want to do and pursue, we're saying, oh, I don't know, or I keep shifting, I make my mind up, and then I change my mind, which goes along with the Mercury retrograde. Mars is sort of like watered down when it's going through Pisces, the sign that Neptune rules. And Neptune is in the not quite middle of a long period over a decade of going through the sign it rules, Pisces. And if you'd like to see an interesting show on that, maybe we can ask the station to dig up and resurrect and put in the archive the March 2012 show when Neptune first entered Pisces. And that was my first show I did with the green screen technology. And it's really a great show. We had specific things that are ruled by Neptune that go with each part I was talking about. So it was a lot more pictures in the background than just these planets that you see going by right now. But this is nice. So we've got three crazy things at the beginning. And that kind of gives us the idea of some of the themes that are going to be important in 2017. Because if we go to the Mercury retrograde theme, Mercury retrogrades some years are all in one particular element. Like in 2016, they always were taking place in the um, Earth signs. But over the course of years to years, where the Mercury retrogrades occur in the elements, which are usually about a third of the sky apart for the retrogrades, and the elements are all a third of the sky apart because there's four of them. Take 12 signs, divide by four, you get three. It moves back to an earlier element. When I say earlier, the elements have a sort of order in the natural zodiac, fire, earth, air, water. So here, if we've been in Earth, we're going backwards. It's retrograde. Anyway, going back into Earth signs. I'm sorry, back into fire signs. So the Earth signs are the practical down to Earth. And when we've got our mind planet working that way, it says, oh, we want to know tangibly, have our fingers on what's real and be able to you know, measure it and touch it. As we go into the fire signs, it's more about inspiration intuition, action, and maybe even impulsive action. So it's less practical, more impulsive. And that's how we'll kind of evolve our thinking over the course of 2017. Now one of the things that's really interesting, and this does not happen every year, the top end of one of the retrogrades is just barely overlapping with the bottom end of the another one. So at the very beginning of 2017, we have a, a Mercury station at about 29 degrees of Sagittarius. And then at the end of 2017, like three, four retrogrades later, that's four retrogrades later, we have another Mercury station at 29 degrees of Sagittarius. So that degree is what we would call a hot degree for 2017. Um, action is happening there. If you have something in your chart at about that degree, or even at the degrees, let's say, maybe a third of the sky to it from 29 Leo 
or Aries, or maybe the signs that are four, four signs apart from Sagittarius or eight. Those form a cross. So a cross from Sagittarius is Gemini, and at right angles, Pisces and Virgo. So basically, if you're born almost on the cusp of those sign-changing times, which would be the equinoxes, the solstices, you're going to have this energy strong in your chart for this year. Fire is a very strong element in 2017, and this has been going on for a while due to the presence of crazy Uranus. Uranus spends about seven years in each sign, and we're now into the last full year of Uranus going through Aries, starting in 2018, and then shifting into tw between 2018 and 2019, Uranus starts moving into Taurus. And why it takes a little back and forth time is because of that retrograde back and forth. This is probably going to be, well, we've already started in 2016, the craziest maybe that Uranus gets. Because you might remember, and I've talked about this before on Looking Up, that about 10, 11 years ago, a new little planet was discovered out past Pluto, way past, because it takes almost 560 years to go around the sun. And all the astronomers went nuts. Now, how do we define a planet? This is even bigger than little Pluto was, or about the same size, or now what do we do? So they redefine what a planet is, and now we have dwarf planets. But listen, in astrology, we still consider Pluto a planet. And I guess we have to now consider this new one sort of a planet, too. We can call it a dwarf if we want, but I make sure I look at it. And I think it's a wise idea for any astrologer to look at it. The planet is named Eris, E-R-I-S, and it's named for, in mythology, Mars's sister. She would go into battle with him and revel on it. And she was a feisty broad, and she didn't need any man, and she could reproduce without a man except her kids had awful names like Toil and Trouble, and um, one of them was named Oath. And that gives us the idea that truth is very important to Eris. And we're going to see how that plays out in the course of 2017. But Eris was the outcast amongst the gods and goddesses. So when I look at this, I go, hmm, oh, like reviled instead of revered. I say, well, do we see some energy in the latter part of 2016 leading into 2017 with you know whether somebody's revered or reviled and you can see that in both of the presidential candidates that we had in this crazy surprising election so Uranus and Eris are already at it they had two conjunctions coming together in 2016 and the third and final one is on St. Patrick's Day of 2017 but they're still pretty close to that conjunction as we go forward into the spring. And anything that is in place at the time of a solstice or an equinox will reverberate through the season that follows. There's like a season chart that starts when the sun comes into that new sign of the season. So the craziness of Uranus and Eris continues into the full spring not just March. When we're going to have some really crazy times, I mentioned Mars starts the year in Pisces. Then it moves to the next sign, which is Aries. Mars ruling Aries, that's kind of the signal that they, it, Mars works most powerfully in the sign in, with which it's associated. So it's going to really come in with a vengeance. And I kind of forgot what date. Mars goes into Aries, so I'm just going to look it up quickly in my Janet's Planets and see if I can spot that. Uh -huh. The 28th of January in our time zone here on the East Coast would be 27th on the West Coast. Whenever a planet comes into that zero degrees of one of the season changing signs like spring, summer, fall, winter, extra power, extra punch. These are called the cardinal signs, not cardinal sins, cardinal signs, and they are the ones that bring action and force decision. And they really form that sort of four-pointed cross in the zodiac called the cardinal axis. And so we'll see a lot of action on that axis this year as well. We've got 
Late in the year, Saturn, which rules Capricorn, will be entering Capricorn on the 19th of December, just before the winter solstice, and that's going to have a very strong impact for the winter season going into 2018. And I'm getting off track a little bit about Mars. I'll come back to Mars. I just do want to mention that Saturn and its sign of Capricorn together rule systems, structures, governments, rules, regulations. And in your own life, you know, your sense of order. How ship shape is your house? You know, do you have things streamlined or simplified? And so you may find that actually going into 2018, you want to live a more sort of zen, simplified lifestyle. And that's why a good thing to do during 2017 is get rid of a lot of the stuff you don't want to keep dragging along with you if you haven't already. Because when you're getting into this one year, hopefully coming out of the nine year, you were getting rid of some things. Some things were ending for you. So to come back to Mars, Mars comes into Aries. Well, what's waiting for it there? Oh yeah, Uranus and Eris. And Mars catches up to these two very close to the full moon, um, no, the solar eclipse. Solar eclipse? Yes, it is. On the 26th of February. So that is a really strong new moon. A lot of things will start shaking up and um, bringing in that newness more so than maybe right at the new year. And of course, we know the new year starts with the old president still in office, and by the time we get into February, we have a new president. Okay, so fire signs, I was talking about that. You know what was interesting? I looked up some things about, well, when Mars connects with Eris and Uranus, do we have some history of what went on? And the big thing that I noticed was, and this had kind of escaped me much, because it wasn't in our country, but it was close. There was this giant, giant, I mean huge wildfire in Alberta, Canada, started I think May 1st, and it was not totally under control until the 5th of July. That is over two months. There was one little town, Fort McMurray or McMurty, something like that. 88,000 people had to evacuate in one day early in May. Well, I looked up the chart for that, and here was Mars, not together with Uranus and Eris, but in one of these friction positions called, uh, let's see, sesquiquadrate. That's a mouthful. What it means is square and a half. Square is 90 degrees, half square is 45, square and a half is 135. They're all push degrees that bring about abrasion. So we already know that when Mars connects with Uranus and Eris, we can have something very fiery. It may not be literal fire. It may be revolutionary kind of fire. It may be in our country. It may be in other countries. It may be both. But we would certainly say that there's also this idea of heat being very strong. So we may find that we have, even globally, some warming factors or warmer weather there in the latter part of February. I don't know if that means spring starts early or, you know, just keep your eye on it. That'll be interesting. But if you were to say to yourself, well, what about my life? Things that you might be trying to get going there in the February time frame, especially following this new moon eclipse at the end of February, have like big spark and they've got um, kind of a wildfire side to them that you might want to be a little cautious with. Okay, now also in the element of fire, we have an interesting thing going on for almost half of the year. From about sometime in May till the early part of November, we have a pattern that's like an equilateral triangle called a grand trine, and it's in the fire signs. It includes this iris in Aries, which isn't going anywhere fast. It takes years before it goes through even, you know, much more than a degree. Sometimes Uranus is in this, and it's in the triangle with Saturn. Saturn's going through Sagittarius most of the year. It's going to hit Capricorn at the end of the year, so it's in the late degrees of Sagittarius in 2017. And also in a fire sign, Leo, we have something called the south node of the moon, 
Well, the nodes, there's nothing in the sky there, but they're the intersection. There's a north node, a south node. They're on an exact axis, the opposite degrees of the zodiac. And they are where the orbit of the Earth going around the sun intersects with the moon going around the Earth. So we have, it's almost like two orbits at, like two hula hoops at an angle to each other. And the moon spends half the month above the Earth's sun orbit, half the month below the Earth's sun orbit, and this is where those orbits shift. When we have a new moon, moon, sun, Earth, all lined up near these intersections, that's when a new moon or a full moon is an eclipse. So they're eclipse indicators. But what they're showing, these nodes in our life, is what are we trying to release and what are we trying to go towards even though it's not a comfort zone for us. The south node is comfort zone. So in Leo, it says our comfort zone is dealing with our own creativity, something might relate to children, things that might have to do with our sense of power or leadership in the world. And across from that south node, the north node is going through Aquarius. Well, Aquarius is hmm, ruled by Uranus. It's the sign of the masses and individual energy as well. It's kind of like your own uniqueness as well as how you fit in with kind of the whole. And so that's the harder thing to go toward is finding our place amongst the global village and even feeling connected to that sort of worldwide energy. But a grand trine usually does help us connect. And when there's an opposition like that axis in a triangle, it makes a point off of one of the ends of the triangle and then it looks like a kite and we call it a kite and it's even kind of mm, easier to lift that energy up and fly it. So we have this kite in place for about half the year and it's going to be joined very briefly uh, the, around October 13th, I believe that's the one. I have so many notes here. Um, you might find that by the sun and moon which is pretty cool. Um, but I do know we have these triangles. There's another triangle overlaps with this one to make what we call a Star of David. And it looks just like that. And that's going to be very strong. The third quarter moon in September on the 13th and even a few days after that. So mid-September has some very nice energy that anybody can use to try to get things really um, growing with your creativity, working with groups, uh, doing something new, taking some risks. Saturn, it's not a risk-taking planet naturally, but when it's in Sagittarius, which is a very optimistic sign, it is willing to, or it makes us more willing to take some risks. So that's a good time. Later in September, ooh, not so nice. Really nasty little knot of planets around the end, around the 27th or so. And this brings us into when fire doesn't mix with water. You know, water can put out fire. So here we have Uranus going through the Aries fire sign. And for quite a bit of the year, it's making the 45 degree friction position with Neptune going through Pisces. This doesn't mix nicely. And then what we have there at the end of September Jupiter, which spins off and on through a lot of 2017, exactly across from Uranus, messes with both Uranus and Jupiter, I mean Uranus and Neptune at that time. So when you want to talk about things seeming either fogged, hidden, crazy, big time, because Jupiter, biggest planet, magnifies everything, that's when we have some real issues. So I would say better for you not to think on planning to do launching something important there around the end of September because the energy is just not that nice. Now, um, speaking of Jupiter, and I do want to mention because Jupiter is featured on the cover of the 2017 Janet's Planets. And at the top, there's that kind of, hmm, looks like the crown chakra got electrified. This is auroras. It's the electrically charged particles that are like uh, northern lights, like the aurora borealis, but they're around that polar, north pole of Jupiter. And in 2016, NASA's 
probe called Juno, named for Jupiter's wife in mythology, came closest to Jupiter, gave us new images, and one of the images has this fabulous crown chakra. So you might even think in terms of, you know, with your chakras and your highest energy, trying to uh, electrify that this year to help you expand and do the things that you want to do. Just a little side note there. Okay, hmm. Here it is, I finally found that. It is mid-October when we have the sun and moon on the 14th of October join the kite and also at that time in progress is one of these other types of triangles that I call a QT, quintile triangle, things that are fifths and two-fifths apart in the sky which brings luck and talent. So that's a nice time for you. Another very nice time is in May. The new moon on May 10th is very nice and oh May 5th is one of the best days of the year not necessarily for starting something because it's very late in the moon cycle um, you probably realize this from other times we've chatted but your best growth for anything is when the moon is between the new moon and the full moon and to sort of harvest things then in the second half of the moon cycle, after the full moon, before the next new moon. And there is something that's called On a Page, 2017 On a Page, that's in my calendar, but it's also a free download at astrologybooth.com, and you can get it there and print it out, and that's a nice thing to have handy. And you know, this is maybe another language for you, so while you're there, this is in the study booth, there's an On a Page tab, and also in the study booth Beginners Topics tab, at the bottom, it's kind of hard to scroll to, something called Astrologer's Apprentice Cheat Sheet. And that has the keywords in English for all the things that are the major stuff going on in astrology. Um, except for, well, yeah, the houses are there. I think I put them in that. Houses are only important when you know your birth time and you have your chart. And I highly, highly recommend that you do that. So, let's see what else is important in our last few minutes. Oh, another one of those QTs is at that May 10th new moon. So, very wonderful. Um, hmm. What else? I pulled up the April new moon, April 11th. That's a tough one. When we talk about Uranus and Eris close together, how Jupiter spends a lot of the year opposite them. When you have an opposition and something makes 90 degrees, it's called a T-square, and it's tough, or it's turning point. And Pluto is doing that at that new moon, full moon. Full moon, things come to a head. Pluto and Uranus have been in a sort of square standoff since 2011, 2012. Anyway, we're coming near the end of it, but we're not quite to the end of it. But this is probably the big last hurrah. So if stuff's going to hit the fan, it's probably going to be around then. Watch out for your April vacation. So what did we learn today? Crazy year. Keep your crown chakra going. And see you soon on Looking Up. Mm -hmm.